24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. The Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, for I consider you godly among this generation. You must take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, the male and its mate, two of every kind of unclean animal, the male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird in the sky, male and female, to preserve their offspring on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will cause it to rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will wipe from the face of the ground every living thing that I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters engulfed the earth. Noah entered the ark along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives because of the flood waters. Pairs of clean animals, of unclean animals, of birds, and of everything that creeps along the ground, male and female, came into the ark to Noah, just as God had commanded him. And after seven days the flood waters engulfed the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all of the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day Noah entered the ark, accompanied by his sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth, along with his wife and his sons' three wives. They entered along with every living creature after its kind, every animal after its kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life came into the ark to Noah. Those that entered were male and female, just as God commanded him. Then the Lord shut him in. The flood engulfed the earth for forty days. As the waters increased, they lifted the ark and raised it above the earth. The waters completely overwhelmed the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the waters. The waters completely inundated the earth, so that even all the high mountains on the, under the entire sky were covered. The waters rose more than 20 feet above the mountains, and all of the living things that moved on the earth died including the birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all humankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. So the Lord destroyed every living thing that was on the surface of the ground, including people, animals, creatures that creep along the ground, and birds of the sky. They were wiped off the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark survived. The waters prevailed over the earth for 150 days. But God remembered Noah and all of the wild animals and domestic animals that were with him in the ark. God caused a wind to blow over the earth and the waters receded. The fountains of the deep and the floodgates of heaven were closed and the rain stopped falling from the sky. The waters kept receding steadily from the earth so that they had gone down by the end of the 150 days. On the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on one of the mountains of Ararat. The waters kept on receding until the 10th month. On the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. At the end of forty days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. It kept flying back and forth until the waters had dried up on the earth. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. The dove could not find a resting place for its feet because water still covered the surface of the entire earth 
and so it returned to Noah in the ark. He stretched out his hand, took the dove, and brought it back into the ark. He waited seven more days, and then sent out the dove again from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there was a freshly plucked olive leaf in its beak. Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. He waited another seven days and sent the dove out again, but it did not return to him this time. In Noah's 601st year, in the first day of the first month, the waters had dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. And by the 27th day of the second month, the earth was dry. Then God spoke to Noah and said, Come out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you all of the living creatures that are with you. Bring out living things, including the birds, animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let them increase and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Noah went out along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives. Every living creature, every creeping thing, every bird, and everything that moves on the earth went out of the ark in their groups. Noah built an altar to the Lord. He then took some of every kind of clean animal and clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. Even though the inclination of their minds is evil from childhood on, I will never again destroy everything that lives as I have just done. While the earth continues to exist, planting time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. God, I just thank you for your promises. Your promises that have never once not come true in my life. I thank you for your consistency, for telling us that as long as the earth continues to exist, there will always be a nighttime, a daytime, there will always be a winter time and a summer time. We can always count on you. You are always consistent. You are always there. Your promises are always true. So when our lives are chaotic and filled with drama and busyness and stress and people, <laughs> allow us to just find ourselves in your arms looking up at you and just asking that you take everything away from us, all of these burdens and frustrations, and just allow us to melt in your arms, in your consistency, in your promises to us. You are the one thing in my life, God, that I can always count on. You are the one person in my life who will love me no matter what. You are the one person in my life who will never break their promise. Thank you, God, for being the one person in my life who I know I can always turn to, who I can always trust, who will always be faithful and love me more than I will ever deserve. God, I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.